Man, tanking seems so cool. It's uh, too bad I have to learn all the mechanics and lead everybody through a dungeon or raid. Everybody's probably just going to get mad at me because I'm so bad at this thing I've never done before. Ah, guess I'll just continue not doing it. Today we're going to be addressing tank anxiety and a few ways to help, I guess, avoid it or, or get past it. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to help everyone. But for the few that are able to take these tips and tricks that I have learned in the past couple hundred hours of tanking, hopefully you're able to get in your nice tank queues and play some of the classes that you've been wanting to play, but have been preventing yourself from playing due to tank anxiety. I'm thinking that probably the easiest way to show you these tips that I'm going to start to try to explain is to just run through a dungeon on a lower level class instead of a level 90 and we're just going to kind of go through these early dungeons because I think what happens a lot is most of the time people are going to be looking at end game content and they're going to overwhelm themselves before they've even started thinking that they have a whole ton of responsibilities that they're just diving right into whereas in reality if you start out leveling a lower level class uh, like a warrior paladin or dark knight you're not going to be jumping in quite as deep as if you were to jump into a level 60 gunbreaker not to say you shouldn't or can't jump into a level 60 gunbreaker that's exactly what i did but i didn't really experience as much tank anxiety and i have some experience tanking and playing a more busy class i also did a ton of research on the job before i even jumped into it kind of made sure that i had all my ducks in a row on the actual job i even practiced using my rotation on target dummies as well as going through heaven on high uh, that sort of stuff really got me comfortable with the job then i felt a little bit more comfortable jumping into dungeons i by no means unlocked the job and just jumped into dungeons. The one dungeon that I did jump into the very first time playing Gunbreaker, I probably caused us to wipe three or four times. So do your research on the job that you want to play. If it is a higher level one, such as Gunbreaker or even Dark Knight to some extent, uh, except where they really only have five buttons starting out at level 30. But um, honestly, the probably the best experience if you have no experience tanking uh, or you're extremely anxious trying out tank, I would recommend starting out as a warrior or a paladin. And really all we have left to do is to just jump right into it. Uh, so we're going to run into our leveling queue. We're just going to queue up his tank. And I'm going to try to my best to walk us through the thought process that I'm going through while tanking in these lower level dungeons. All the thought processes I'm going to be talking about here could all carry into higher level content just to a different degree. Um, you'll kind of pick up as you go through the harder and harder content with your with your all right, so our dungeon just popped. The first thing I'm gonna be wanting to do right as we jump into this dungeon is I'm going to activate my enmity stance and you wanna enable that every time you jump into a dungeon, just make sure that it's activated. Thankfully, we have this little icon down at the bottom right hand corner for me. Uh, it'll be different for you. It's just dependent on what, how you set up your HUD. Luckily, we have these gems or icons for all of the tank classes that show you that you have it activated. All right, so now I know I have my enmity stance activated. Uh, activated grit and now this is all this little icon is lit up and just because we're in these lower dun level dungeons i'm not going to be pulling as large i'm going to be keeping it more tame pulling a, a couple just because not a lot of classes at this low level have very good aoe abilities and i'm just going to be pressing my reprisal or my rampart uh, if i'm taking a lot of damage right, we're going to move in uh i want to make sure everybody's inside the purple line there Seems like we're good. I'm gonna attack. And I'm gonna run through the boss and turn it around. Aim it towards, uh, aim it away from my team. I'm gonna add reprisal here just so I take a little bit less damage from this uh, mob. I'm just gonna keep hitting my combo. And what I'll do usually is I'll look around the dungeon just to see if there's anything going on. Like this is gonna be needing to be addressed. So hopefully somebody else does something. If you see him casting, you can use your stun to try to help mitigate some of that damage. We're not stressing it. All right, we just DPS through the, uh, <laughs> through whatever's going on. All right, so I'm gonna use my range attack, hit my AOE on both of them and run through. So I can go move on to this next pack. Range attack, AOE, and I'm gonna sit here. And I know I pulled a couple, so I'm gonna hit Rampart here just to take a little bit less damage. And I'm gonna just hit my AOE, hit my AOE, all right, and now I'm going to do my combo abilities, just swapping, because I know I only have a few mobs at a time. 
We're gonna hit my AoE here. That way I get full aggro on everybody. We're just gonna hit my AoE. We have more than three targets here. And two, we're gonna hit the combo abilities. Single target, more accurately. All right, so we're gonna move along. And this is kind of the rinse and repeat. You hit your ranged ability on one of them, pull everything, let them come to you, hit your AoE, move along. Just making sure that you have the aggro on the mob there. I hit that one with my ranged ability and just keep moving on. I'll hit sprint just so I avoid taking too much unnecessary damage. They're doing a little bit of damage to them from far away, which is fine. Editor Wind here. I just want to make mention the reason that I am pulling and running through the pack to move on to the next pack is so that I can group up a couple of mob packs together. That way we're able to just AoE down a couple of packs rather than just one or two stragglers here. In this specific group, they were killing them before I was able to actually group them up, and that's why you'll see that I also slow down in a minute. Don't just pull and run and pull and run. You want to actually group up some of the mobs. You, you do need to kill the mobs. Don't just keep running away from them, because then your melee DPS especially will have a very hard time attacking the mobs. So after two or three mob packs, you want to stop condense them all, and then start attacking the giant group rather than just the stragglers left behind from uh, whoever killed them before they even got to you. In this specific group, I should have slowed down sooner, but anyways, back to it. I'm going to pull this, and I'm going to just stop here for this little pack. I'm going to AoE, AoE. We have two mobs, so we're going to do our combo. I'm going to hit Reprisal here. Take a little bit less damage from their attacks. All right. We're going to go do the part of the dungeon. All right. And so there's a little bit bigger of a pull here. So we're going to pull this guy. I'm going to hit this guy. We're going to AoE right here. And I know the boss is coming up soon. So I'm going to pull a little bit slower. I have four mobs here, so I'm just AoEing. I'm not taking too much damage. Oh, I'm kind of taking a little bit of damage, but everybody's dead, so I'm not I'm not super stressing it. I'm not gonna pop rampart. We're okay there. I do have a bleed on me, but I should be healthy enough to be able to handle that. So now for bosses, it's pretty much the same. Um if these low levels, uh you don't really have to conserve your tanking your tank abilities too much. But this fight, we're gonna hit him with our ranged ability, pull him really close, get him out of the water. We're just gonna hit our combo ability. We're gonna aim him away from our team. That's what we're going to get, get in the habit of. He's going to do his uh, thing. He's going to electrocution, so we want to be out of the water here. And we're waiting for these adds to come in. We're just going to AoE, try to hit them before they hit our team. Get out of that AoE damage. We're going to try to grab aggro before they get to them. All right, pulling aggro, getting out of the AoE ability. We're going to try to hit our ranged ability on the on the boss. This is good. We're going to run through the boss, hit reprisal, take a little bit less damage. Use our combo abilities here. Just our one, two, three. He's running away to do his mob thing again. So we're going to get out of the water to take less damage. He's going to uh, pop some adds. We're going to AOE, get out of the damage. I stepped into the water there, but... Another thing I want to mention here is that in higher level content, it's even more imperative that you dodge the incoming damage, like those giant orange circles uh, for the AoE damage coming from the enemies. In higher level content, you're going to get vulnerability stacks if you get hit by that. So it's imperative that you get used to moving out of those abilities. The boss is going to stand still and cast those abilities in the direction that they first cast them anyways. Uh, so you moving away will not spin the boss. You're really just helping out your entire team by moving out of those that damaging ability. If you get more than just a couple of stacks in higher level content, you're going to start getting one shot as if you are not a tank at all with no mitigation. So it is crucial that you work on avoiding any avoidable damage. Uh, just because you're a tank doesn't mean you need to tank all damage. Those giant AoE circles and indicators will not be there forever, especially if you get into extreme and savage content. So get used to recognizing when something is casting an ability 
And uh, if it is something that you can dodge and move out of the way of, it's only going to get harder as you progress into higher level content. So if you have already gotten a higher level or max level uh, character before, uh, and you're playing um, in Savage content with a DPS or a healer, then you already know this. But uh, for those new players, this is this is very important information. Get used to moving out of those avoidable damage abilities. We're just hitting these guys from range, trying to kill them down quickly. Get out of the AOE damage. Great. We're going to pull that boss again. We're going to run back through it, aim it away from the team. And I'm pretty healthy. I don't really have to worry about popping Rampart. So we're just going to keep tanking through. And we killed him. So now we get to take our loot. We're going to go through both of these. Just hit greed on both. And we're going to hit our portal. It's pretty simple. Pretty easy. I wasn't taking a whole lot of damage there. So there was no reason to pop all my defensives. I could save it and hold on to it. Just in case I did take a little bit of damage. We're going to wait for everybody to go through their cutscene before we start. So that's just another thing that we want to keep an eye out for. Um, that is something that is part of our responsibility as a tank. Uh, sometimes healers won't go in without you attacking first. Neither would DPS typically, but we're going to wait for these guys to go through their uh, their cutscene and move into the purple. And now we're going to kind of gear up. We're going to hit from range because we want to get this boss into the center of the map. When he runs a little bit, we're going to run through him, aim him away from the team. And just start hitting our one-two combo. Get out of any damage that we have. He's just going to be doing damage. Uh, this boss, he does um, he has a bunch of adds in this one. So this is kind of a weird example for what to expect. All right, he's out of his uh, fire here. We're going to do our one-two-three combos. Aiming the tank. A aiming the boss away from your team here. I'm going to reprisal as well. Just hit him. Take a little bit less damage, hopefully. Of course, I wasted it again. He's now in his AoE phase, or he's in his uh, little AoE thing. We gotta kill this fire spirit. We're gonna get him. Do our one, two, three again. We're one, two in this case. We don't have one, two, three yet. Unlocked. We're just gonna keep DPSing him down. DPS him down. All right, he's probably gonna go into his fire phase again. Or not, maybe. Okay, so we're out of that AoE. We're good. We're good. Did somebody limit break, it looks like? Yep. So that's good. Easy enough. All right. And now they're all going through this. We're just going to say GG's in the chat. Make sure we put our accommodation. You can do it whoever you want. I typically like to do it on the healers, especially if I didn't get too low. Um, and we're out of a dungeon. Give a TLDR of things that you want to keep in mind while in a dungeon. The first thing you want to do is when you get into the dungeon is turn on your tank or enmity stance. Make sure that your enmity stance button is on the same key on every job that you play for a tank and make sure that you are easily able to identify that you are in tank stance based on the location of your enmity stance indicator. You also want to be running pretty far ahead of your team. That way you can be the first one to pull and get into combat. Uh, AOE the group and make sure that you have full aggro on the group that you just pulled. Um, test out the damage that you're taking. Uh, on the first group and, and that way you can kind of gauge if you're able to pull more or less uh, just it, it kind of depends uh, and varies based on group to group usually you can safely pull more than one group but it's really just up to how comfortable you're feeling sometimes you'll get groups that say you're not pulling enough that's okay especially if you're just learning uh, don't mind them just pull at your own pace whatever you're comfortable with uh, they'll They'll get over themselves, they'll leave, you'll find a, a replacement in no time. It's not that big of a deal. A big thing that I do want to mention is also uh, make sure that everybody is within the the boss's room, I guess. There's, there's usually a clear purple line uh, that covers the doorway uh, of the entrance or exit. Uh, make sure that everybody is inside there and nobody is watching a cutscene. If somebody is watching a cutscene, it'll show that indicator. Just wait for them to finish the cutscene. You don't get started on the boss before they're finished. It's just kind of it's kind of rude 
plus uh, just let them experience content at their at their pace. Uh, that's kind of what this whole community is about anyways. You're not in that much of a rush that you can't wait for somebody to finish a cutscene. Plus, it gives you a little bit of time to recuperate some of your cooldowns that you expended on the last group pull. Finally, also, when you pull a boss, pull the boss to the center. What I'll do is I'll cast my ranged ability. That way it starts walking to me before I get to it. And that usually is enough of a buffer for me to walk through the boss and turn him around from our team. And in that position, he's usually close to the center of the room. You'll kind of get better and better at this as you keep going and you'll understand uh, understand the timing for it. Sometimes you have to wait uh, for the boss to run towards you a little bit before you start running back through it. You you kind of figure it out on a on a boss to boss and distance to boss ratio. Please God never use your gap closing abilities to pull a boss. The reason being, is that it now makes it so that the DPS has to move further to start attacking the boss than if you moved it and let it pull to you. Using your ranged ability means that you are allowing the boss to come to you for a few seconds, and this saves a little bit of time so that you're able to walk straight through the boss and the DPS can already be attacking the boss. Whereas if you used a ranged uh, 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 gap closing ability, you're gonna be much farther away from your party because usually you're the first one running in, uh, and they have to run their ass all the way over to the boss. It's just, it's not a good habit to get into. Uh, so don't, I would just say, just don't get started in it and you'll be much, much happier for it. And everybody who's playing with you will be much happier with you. Uh, hope this helped. Uh, if it did, feel free to leave a like and uh, subscribe for more content.